Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Eugenio here, directly from the Netherlands. Today is a great day, so I decided to go for a simple outfit, shave my beard. I'm out here looking like Wednesday Adams. You know, just trying to take the things a step back after last video. I hope you're having a beautiful day. I hope you're safe out there. So today's videos, we're gonna discuss fashion mistakes, my personal top five, the five I could think about. And then we're gonna discuss, you know, a little bit more the details about them, what happened, and what we can both do to avoid them. Just let me know in the comments if that's something that happened to you. And don't forget to follow me, leave a comment, leave a like, follow me on Vinted, Charles Paris, Charles like the king, Paris like Paris with the X at the end. Let's have a coffee together and let's get into it. So let's start with what are, I think, uh, some of fashion mistakes I made. When I'm talking about fashion mistakes, I'm talking about buying, styling, idealizing, or overall in general, just like the sphere of your appearance, your clothing. The first mistake that comes to mind is ordering things from abroad, especially if you order them from outside of Europe. This is something that I often do. I buy a lot from Taiwan, from Japan, from Korea. I really like to support collective brands or small brands that are based in there. For example, Invincible is a great retailer based in Taiwan. Or for example, uh, one of my favorite illustrator, Johnny Terror, who's based in Tokyo. So what I often do, I buy items from them. I like to support little artists. I like to support up and coming brands. But <laughs> let's say I'm a bit too generous. And the mistake I make is that without knowing the quality, without knowing really the fit, I just buy and goods are shipped over, which has two mistakes, let's say two risks for us. One is tax to pay, and then of course is not included in the price, but especially it's gonna be very hard to return the item. I love to support my up and coming emergence artists, uh, creators, but on the other hand, uh, for example, I have these pants from Nulpint.org. I really like them, but they're too long for me and I would like to return them. I also have this t-shirt that I would like to return because it's not really my vibe with the double layer on the sleeve. Unfortunately, this is something out of the picture because I would have to return them to Japan and the cost for me would be very high, especially for the shipping cost and the freight cost and the import cost, etc. So if you're buying something for far away, that's great. It's nice to keep your wardrobe diverse, but always keep in mind the extra costs and the how harder it's gonna get to return the item, yeah. My second mistake, this is something that I used to do when I was a bit younger, but it's also current and relevant now, is over-accessorizing. So we all hear, hey, how should you elevate your style? Accessorize, so start with a nice watch, with a couple of rings, maybe an earring, a necklace, etc. This is great, but I was guilty of the crime of the, of, let's say, uh, misstep of accessorizing too much. And uh, of course, that's just gonna take uh, away from your outfit. Let's say, for example, if I leave the house with a simple basic outfit, it's nice to add some spice, add some details, add some creation. And I love accessories. I'm really into watches. I'm really into metal uh, accessories because I think it's a great way to have something that's gonna last with you forever, to have a that more personality. So I love that. I love that kind of, you know, loyalty that you have to your accessory, especially if they're built to last. But on the other hand, if you do it too much, then you're gonna lose a focus on your outfit. And especially it's gonna be, let's be honest with each other, it's kind of uncomfortable to go out with a lot of bracelets, with a lot of accessories. Because okay, let's imagine, you have a watch, fine. But if you have more than one rings, at least personally, they get they touch each other, your hands get sweaty, maybe you're moving around, it's hard to type, then you have other bracelets here, it's hard to pull up your sleeves. So overall, <laughs> let's say the second mistake is not make accessory a limit and a barrier for you. Let's have them be a complement to your outfit and your style, but don't overdo it. Do it tastefully and great that you want to expand your wardrobe, not have only clothes, but also have accessories but let's, uh, let's keep it uh, as simple as possible. That would be my solution to my second mistake looking back. Third mistake that still has to do a little bit with accessorizing, I would say is idolizing the style of celebrities. You see it very often nowadays, there is brands, there is images, think about Jacob Elordi, for example, Jeremy Allen White, 
uh, Paul Mescal, all these new up and coming um, actors in the menswear space. And you can see how people, maybe this is like social media culture, but like how every outfit they're pushing out gets replicated and people become obsessed with how somebody dress. I think it's fantastic to have inspiration, but I was also guilty too in the past. I used to inspire myself a lot, for example, to like rappers. For that, I used to inspire myself into this kind of like rebel aesthetic. It was coming from like the, the Johnny Depp era, you know, in the, let's say, early 2010s. You should see and use it as an inspiration. But I think that if you just don't consider your own body, you don't consider your own proportions, and you just replicate the same outfit that's gonna kind of look weird. Jacob Lorme, let's say for example, he's incredibly tall and he's incredibly good looking. So I don't want uh, a mistake I used to do in the past is like replicating the same exact outfit and then be like, hey, why that, don't I look good that way? Because maybe I'm shorter, I have different volumes, and let's say for example, a long coat on me looks different. So I would advise you and myself to just keep an open mind and always get inspired by others but replicating or obsessing over the start of the moment just because they're brought, you know, denim back is not, is not, is not, is not smart. So overall, the third mistake that I made was to follow uh, the steps of other, let's say, exposed people, influencers, celebrities, a bit too much. And great to keep it as a source, but not make it become like an obsession and just like something that you photocopy. Because again, in the end, that's not gonna let you happy, yeah. The fourth mistake I was a bit guilty of was following the hype, especially, you know, if you, through your friends, to your social media, you really see uh, up coming and going, but especially if you see just coming, it's really hard to get involved in those trends, you know, think about, for example, the Arda Special last year, think about the Wales Bonner, um, you can really see in today's like uh, panorama how things are just like rising up, becoming essential and then disappearing. And I think that again, as it's a great for inspiration, uh, but we also have to be careful not to obsess too much. I'm gonna give you an example. Back in 2021, I used to work for CP company and our store was facing a New Balance flagship store. I wasn't really into sneakers back then, I was more into boots. And uh, what I did is, through my partner and also like through having the store there, I kind of got exposed to New Balance and the whole world with New Balance made in US, made in UK, the different models. And it was right at the beginning of this newfoundly hype for New Balance, who then started bringing out the collaborations with Aimee Leon Dor, for example, with the 650s, with the Jay Jones collaboration. So the bubble of hype was really there. And I felt motivated to just start buying New Balance, which again, is great in general, but I went way too deep into it. So I bought myself a pair of 990s version five in gray, a pair of 990s version five in black, I bought myself a pair of 993s, I bought myself a pair of J. Jones, the green ones, and I had to kind of stop myself. Great that you have comfortable, sweat, low-key shoes. It's nice to have your hype shoes. For example, yesterday I had an inter work interview. It was fantastic that I was able, you know, to feel good in my pair of J. Jones, for example. But I wouldn't recommend going a bit too hard into the hype, especially because you should always try and be lucid you know, having one item, having two, but making sure that there's not too much. So I would say, yeah, that's the overall advice. Like, it's nice if you feel like exploring another brand, it's nice if you feel like having more of something, but don't overdo it just because of social pressure or because it's cheaper or because you found the steel, you know? Always think organically and don't follow the hype too much, I would say. Still on the topic of the hype, I would also like to touch another mistake and another advice that I have for myself and for you guys, which is beware of collaboration. Collaboration are great since 2017, you know, with the Louis Vuitton Supreme collaboration. They have been growing and going, expanding. Now basically everyone is collaborating with everyone. But I think an exercise that I really like to do, I love discussing collaboration. I discuss, for example, the Sakai Barcara collaboration. You can find the video here. I love the hype, I love, to, I love to see what's out there. You know, it's great from like an informational point of view, especially if you love fashion. But be always lucid, be always smart, because when you're discussing collaboration, I can talk about this, you know, of course, having worked with CP Company, all their collaboration with Armani, Barbour, Palace, Pata, etc. You really have to look carefully at the pieces. Let's see what's behind the scene. So basically, when a collab is done, the products are either made by one party or the other. 
That means that the quality, let's say for example, if you have a collaboration that can be Supreme per Louis Vuitton, the pieces, some pieces are gonna be made by Supreme, some pieces are gonna be made by Louis Vuitton, you really have to look careful at it. Same thing, for example, with CP Company Barber. So the Barber jacket for the CP Company Barber were made by Barber, so with a determinate expected quality and feel and everything, you know? So I think it's really important to be smart because if you're buying a hoodie for a collaboration and then the hoodie is made by, let's say, like the cheaper brand, then it's like, okay, I'm kind of disappointed because the quality is not there yet. So when you're looking at collabs, always look out for quality. If it's possible for you, try it out. One of my favorite collaborations, for example, is this collaboration done by Lysteer, by the Carhartt and Invincible. They came out with amazing short jackets that I really, really like. I love how the nylon reinvented these models. So I like the volumes. I'm actually waiting on a shirt and a hoodie that I bought from the same collaboration. I love the pants. I have them in both colorways. But t-shirts from this collab were absolutely mid. They were just like simple Carhartt t-shirts. There was no reinventing the volumes. There was like no different material. So always remember, I had to remember myself to not follow the hype too hard with a collab, but be like, okay, this is special, that's special. I see what's the plus that's brought by the collaboration. I want to invest in that. I want to save, I want to look and refresh my vintage while looking for that. But on the other hand, I'm not gonna believe too hard and just buy everything just because there is a logo stamped on it. So be smart with your collab. Always look who's making what, and, uh, and you will see again, uh, and you're gonna have less things in your wardrobe, but for sure better quality. Bonus tip, don't have too much clothes. This is, let's say, mistake number five. I had so many clothes in my uh, wardrobe. So many, I had working uniform from CP company. I had so much stuff that I bought because it was cheap. So overall, let's use all these five mistakes to avoid having too many clothes in your wardrobe. That's the saddest thing in the world, if you have 15 jackets, you only wear three. What about the other 12? You know, you should think about the other clothes and either you wear them or you have to, you know, get rid of them, sell them, whatever. So always keep in mind, this is just more of a general advice, but always keep in mind how many items you have, how many pants you have, how many shoes you have, and be sure to get wear out of these things. There's nothing sadder than like a garment that you maybe love, you spend a lot of money for and you never wear. So keep that also in mind. Bonus tip just for you, especially if you're subscribed. If you're not subscribed, don't listen to this advice. So guys, the coffee is over. Thank you very much for your time. It was fantastic to grow through the, let's say five plus one uh, mistakes that I've made. I'm explaining you, you know, why I made those. If you have any questions, any comment, you wanna also this, share with the community what you guys think. It's always great to hear. So yeah, it was a pleasure having you guys. Thank you for your time and have a wonderful weekend. Love you, bye.